Hi there, this is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer, with another book review. In this video, we're discussing Sue Grafton's A is for Alibi. Now, this series is my favourite PI series of all time. I love this series, and some of these books, as I go through them, will be a reread, but I do plan to read A through Y. We all know that Sue Grafton died, unfortunately, before she finished Z, so the alphabet ends at Y. With this novel, it's an immediate hook. At the very start of this novel, Kinsey tells us that she's killed a man, and we get to find out why. Now, if that doesn't hook you as a reader, I don't know what will. What I do love about this series and this novel, other than that really good hook at the start, is that this is set in the 80s, and I just love that feel of the PI having to go out onto the streets, you know, pound the pavement, do manual work to find out who a killer is or solve the case. I love that aspect. The investigator isn't sitting on their bum in an office typing away on the internet. There are no cell phones, no cool gadgets. It's all grunt work. And I love that about this series. And I think it was so clever by Sue Crafton to set this in the 80s. Also, I think it was really clever to have the main character a female PI and to make her really strong and confident. We know she's strong and confident because we see that through her interactions with other characters, just the way she handles herself. And we get a little bit of her history at the start, you know, that she's been divorced twice, got no kids. She's got a small apartment, but she likes that because she likes to keep her life pretty minimal. I really like that about this character that strong female character really does well in this novel, and I think it was a really good choice. So the plot in a nutshell, Kingsley's asked by a woman who's just out of prison to find out who killed her husband. This woman was found guilty of killing her husband in the court of law, but now she's out of prison. She wants Kinsey to find out the truth. Kinsey weighs up the odds a bit, does it fairly quickly, but in most of Kinsey's books, and this book as well, it's the money that tips the scales. She needs to eat. She needs to pay her rent. So Kinsey's always drawn to cases that sometimes feel a bit out of a depth at the start, but it's that money that draws her in. Kinsey thinks that this is going to be a pretty straightforward case. She's going to talk to this woman's children, some of her friends, the lawyer, maybe go down and talk to somebody at the police station who was on the case. She thinks it's going to be pretty cut and dry, that she'll either find out, get a feeling that if the woman was even innocent, how can she prove it anyway? Anything can be further from the truth when we get through this novel. I won't give too much away because even small things in this novel, if I tell you, we just ruin the plot, ruin those twists and turns. But I really got to love in this first book Kinsey's investigation style, just the way she handles herself and the way she talks to people. The character's very relatable, and she seems to get people off guard a bit and get them to divulge their secrets to her, and I think that's just a really clever plot device by Sue Grafton. This case takes Kinsey to different locations, and I thought that was really good as well, get Kinsey out of her comfort zone fairly early on. Unfortunately, it has a downside in that we don't get to see a lot of the side characters, the supporting characters for the Kinsey character in this series so much in this novel. That's a bit of a shame because as you progress through this series, those characters really come to life and add so much to this series. I adore some of the characters in this novel other than Kinsey. Henry Pitts, her landlord, Rosie, a uh, Hungarian woman who's a bit eccentric, she owns this dodgy restaurant. They all add so much to plots later on in the series. I think they could have added a bit to this as well, but maybe because this is the debut novel, the author wanted to focus more on Kinsey to bring that character to life more for us, the readers. That's probably a good choice because we want to know more about Kinsey straight away, and she's such an engaging character. Why not bring her to life? So I already touched on the characters a little bit, but let's just go through them again. Kinsey Malone, of course, the main character, a great character, 
the best PI character I've read in a series. She's tough, she's agile in her thinking and just in her movement as well. She's fresh, she's invigorating, just very engaging as a character. Condolan. Now he's a lieutenant at the police department that Kinsey goes to to ask about the case where her client was found guilty of murdering her husband. He's a bit of a hard nut to crack, Condolan. You get the impression that he thinks Kinsey's a bit of a troublemaker, you know, doesn't want to let her get too involved in things, but you also get the impression that he kind of does like her, thinks that she's okay. So you have that strange relationship between them at the moment in this series. And that does develop later on, but for the moment, they're a bit standoffish. She's not afraid to throw a few insults his way and vice versa. Henry Pitts, Kinsey's landlord. Now he's a great character, but in this novel, unfortunately, we don't really get to see much of him. We learn the basics. He's a retired baker. He's a bachelor. Just those very basic things we learn. And it's a shame because he's so colourful as a character, but I would have liked to see just a little bit more of him in this novel. Similar, I would have liked to see a bit more of Rosie. Now, I mentioned before that Rosie is an eccentric Hungarian who owns a dodgy restaurant. That's about as much as we learn in this novel. We do see her communication style a bit with Kinsey. She's a bit strange in the way she communicates with people, but that's mainly with people she doesn't know yet. And for her friends, her regular customers, she's not so bad. But she's also a very interesting character and much to comic relief in the series. But I do adore Rosie the character, just as I adore Henry Pitts as well. This is a great debut novel in the series. You won't find it's the best in the series. I didn't. But I think it's still worth a 4 out of 5 stars. That's because of the hook at the start. It's so good, that hook. And also how Kinsey is developed. Another aspect is the 80s setting of this story. I just love the manual work that Kinsey has to do because it brings the reader so much more into the investigation. It's not so much hands-off. We have to get in with Kinsey, get in there and get into the dirty details and do that manual work, talk to people, get on the streets. We follow Kinsey do that, so we're drawn into that as well. That's a great aspect of this series, and that's the reason why this deserves 4 out of 5 stars. I will be doing videos on the rest of the series. Some, of course, as I mentioned, are rereads for me, but I will be rereading them to get a fresh perspective of what I think of each novel.